Hey everyone, welcome back to Jeff the IT Guy. Today we're gonna to be starting a new project and in this project we're gonna be working with none other than the Raspberry Pi. That's right, we're gonna be starting up a new Raspberry Pi uh, series here on the <clears throat> channel. We're gonna be looking at some pretty cool projects but this first one we're gonna get started out with is we're going to create our own Raspberry Pi NAS. And so for this, I'm gonna tell you what you'll need. You'll need a Raspberry Pi. Uh, we'll be using the Raspberry Pi 4, um, <clears throat> which has two USB 3 and uh, 3.0 uh, USB ports and then two USB 2.0 ports. So keep that in mind. Um, so like I said, <clears throat> we're gonna be using the Raspberry Pi 4. Also what you'll need to follow along with this is you're gonna need a form of storage, external storage. And so what we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using two one terabyte external USB 3 drives. Um, <clears throat> you can use more than one terabyte. However, you do need two of them. Um, the reason for that is because the way we're gonna set it up, it's gonna be in RAID. And so <clears throat> it'll create a little bit of redundancy. So you do need two of them. You can also look at getting something like this, which this right here is a USB 3, two and a half inch um, connector. And so what you do is you can put a two and a half inch uh, hard drive in here or a two and a half inch SSD and it connects and it's USB 3. And so you can actually use one of these. Um, you can also use a USB 3, a three and a half inch hard drive. Uh, it's just like this, except it's big enough to support a three and a half inch hard drive. And all this stuff will be linked in the description below um, so that you can have everything you need. So there'll be a kit link, there'll be the hard drives, um, there'll be these <clears throat> here as well um, for both the two and a half inch and three and a half inch. Um, you can also get what's called a hat, um, which will allow you to connect hard drives to the Raspberry Pi instead of using the USB 3 uh, interface. And so <clears throat> I'll link that in the description and I'll put a picture of it up as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to set this up. And so really, the only thing you need to do is the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm actually going to be doing it over the network. So I'm going to be using VNC and capturing it so that we can go through all the steps. But all you'll do is you'll take it and you'll connect your two hard drives to it and to the USB 3 spots. If you want to connect more than two, um, what you're going to want to do is you're want to go on, going to want to get a USB 3 powered uh, hub to connect to your Raspberry Pi. And so once you connect them, it's just gonna look like this. I'm gonna go take mine and put it over in the corner, which is where I keep my Raspberry Pi. Um, like I said, because I connect to it via the network. If you do get a dongle, you'll just put the dongle in there um, for the USB 3 and you can add more. And so here is two that we're gonna use. And then <clears throat> just make sure you plug it up. Make sure that you've already got Raspbian uh, already on here. And so if you buy this kit, um, it'll come pre-installed on the micro SD card. And so just go ahead and plug it in, get everything set up. And once you get ready, plug in your USB 3 drives and then we will continue uh, from VNC Viewer. Hey, so now it's time to set up our external drives so that we can use them as a NAS. And so previously in the video, whenever I was doing the introduction, I mentioned, you know, one terabyte drives. Um, with this, I would go ahead, I would try and get some larger drives if, if I were you. Uh, I'm just using one terabyte so that I can do this tutorial. However, you know, you can pick up four terabyte, six terabyte drives, um, and you can have as many as you can fit onto a USB uh, port as well. You can also get powered ones that you can put three and a half inch drives in, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you can put, you know, six, eight, ten, whatever, how many terabytes you want to and they'll always have power because they really require external power. But that being said though, let's go ahead and we're gonna continue in this. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your system is updated. So you can say sudo apt update, okay? And everything here should be updated. It may not be. Looks like it's got a couple packages. I'll go ahead and do this and let it run. Okay. And so to upgrade, you're going to say sudo apt upgrade. It's going to ask if you want to, and you just say yes. 
it's going to update. Uh, sometimes if you're doing this for the first time, it can take quite a long time. Um, so we're going to hop back in whenever this is all done. Okay, so now that we're all done with the updates and everything and the upgrades, let's go ahead and let's look uh, through a couple Linux commands to see what disk we have um, already in. So I'm going to say lsblk. And this is going to give us a list of the drives that are connected to our Raspberry Pi. As you can see, I've got one called SDA, one called SDB, and one that's called MMC BLK0. That MMC, that is your SD memory card. The ones that are named with SDA or SDB, SDC, um, all the way up, those are your external drives via the USB bus. And so as you can see, I've already got one that's mounted here um, that's called My Wife's Pictures. And so this is a way that my wife can upload all the pictures that she takes and have it in one spot and so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the other drive that i have connected and you can see the size and what it is and everything right here um so the next thing you're going to type in is uh, sudo actually you can just type in f disk so f disk and then um the name of the drive so sdb but you're going to say devs like this. So you're going to say slash dev slash sdb. And it'll say that I can't do anything. And the reason for that is because you have to use sudo with this command. So if you say sudo fdisk, it will say sudo fdisk sdb. You got to spell it correctly first. Okay, sudo fdisk sdb slash dev slash sdb like that I'm having a hard time typing okay it's gonna say that these changes will only remain in memory it's gonna ask what command you want to put um so for this one uh this has already got a partition on it if it doesn't have a partition you would put in if it does you'd hit d and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say d which stands for delete Okay, and it says, all right, partition one has been deleted, so I'm gonna click N for a new partition. I'm gonna hit P for primary. It's gonna ask how many partition numbers I want. You can do up to four. I'm just gonna do one. Then I'm gonna select the defaults for everything else. It's gonna say this has a, a RAID signature to it. Ask if you wanna remove it. Um, yes, I tried to set this up in RAID earlier. And then it says, Okay, it's been done. So now for this to just go out of memory and actually partition the drive, you need to hit W, which is for write. And so it can take some time. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the terminal here so that we have some room to work with. So now that we have created that partition, we're going to say sudo mkfs dash t space xext4. Then we're going to give it the drive, which is going to be SDB1. And what that stands for is that is the drive SDB, but it's the first partition. Okay, so this is going to make it. Um, so it's going to make that file system. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to say it's going to do the tables and create the journey. And this right here can take a little bit of time. So just let it run. It's going to do its thing. Okay. So now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a label. And so I'm going to give this a label of, to do that you're going to say sudo space e2 label slash dev slash sdb1. So that's that sdb drive in the partition one. Okay, and then what you want it to be called. And so I'm just going to call it like code um, and hit enter. And it's going to give that a label. So if I want to say lsblk, um, I actually won't say it here, but if I was, it would it would show that it um, if it was mounted. Okay, and so the next thing that you need to do is you need to install Samba. After you do all this, you're going to want to make sure that you reboot your Raspberry Pi so that that drive shows up. So now that our Raspberry Pi has rebooted, you can see that I've got both of my hard drives here both wife's pictures and code available. So let's go ahead and go into the terminal. Let's type in LSBLK. 
and we'll see that they're both mounted and the mount point is media pi. Okay. And so what Samba does is it works off of the SMB protocols for sharing a Windows drive. And so you need to install that. So all you're gonna say is you're gonna say sudo app-get install Samba Samba common. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and install this. Um, just hit enter for it. It's gonna ask you about using Windows, using Win settings for DHPC. Hit yes for that. Um, and that's all you gotta do. So now what we're gonna do, I've already done this. So go ahead and install, do that. Hit click, you know, install it, hit yes. So now all we need to do is we need to go to sudo nano and we're going to modify the Samba conf, and that's going to be smb.conf, like this. So this is the command that you need to use. Okay, and as you can see in here, there's going to be lines and lines of code. And at the bottom, I will have already have made something. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to say code, because that's the name that I gave it. And I'm going to give it the path. So this path is going to be equal to um, the drive location. And so when you do, when you follow this guide, that path is always going to be media. And then where it says pi, that's going to be the name that you give into your pi. And so I've left mine the same. And so that's, I'm still going to leave this pi. And the name of the file system that I created um, for that drive was code. Okay, and we want it to be writable. So we're going to say writable is equal to yes and create the mask for it. We're gonna put that equal to 0775. And then directory mask. It's gonna be equal to 0775 as well. Okay, and we don't want it to be public, so we're gonna say public is equal to no. Okay, then you're gonna hit Control X and then Y to save that. Okay, so now that we have done that, you need to create a username um, if you've already done this, or you just need to create a password. And so the default password for Samba is pi. And so what you use is sudo smb password or smb passwd dash a is pi or for the user pi, so you hit that and it's gonna ask you to enter the password and you're gonna enter it twice, okay? And so now after you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to restart SMB. And so we're gonna say sudo systemctl restart smbd, and this is gonna restart it. And now you need to go into Windows or on your, um, Mac, you can use SMB on Mac, uh, your iPad, something like that, and you should be able to find this drive on the network. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so in the network, you can say forward slash, forward slash Raspberry Pi, forward slash the name of the drive, and your username and password that you created. And then here you can see inside that I can find the code. All right, so this is the code file or the code disk. Um, <clears throat> so I can do this in Windows. You can also do this on Mac. To do this on Mac, you can do Control K, use SMB, type in um, either, you know, forward slash, forward slash Raspberry Pi, forward slash the name of the the drive that you created, the file system that you created. You can also do um, just the IP address. And so the user that we created, which I showed you how to create, that's gonna be pi um, for default. You can also add your own user. And then the password that it asks for is gonna be the password that we created. Um, so that's what it looks like to do it like this. To do it with uh, an IP address, you would just use the IP and then the name of file the file location and it's going to ask for the same thing and so <clears throat> you can use your IP address or you can use the name of 
the Raspberry Pi itself, which by default is Raspberry Pi. And so this is how you take your Raspberry Pi, install Samba, use some external drives, and give yourself some uh, network attached storage so that you can use it to upload things to, um, you know, put your pictures on, whatever. Uh, if you were gonna do this though, like I said, use the larger drives. You can also look at putting these into an array. Um, for doing an array, you're gonna want some really rock solid drives, um, maybe some like Western Digitals, uh, eight terabytes or something, and you're gonna want powered enclosures. You can also get what's called Raspberry Pi hats, um, which allow you to connect multiple drives inside of an enclosure. They're pretty cool. And so if you enjoy these sorts of things, these Raspberry Pi projects that we do here on the channel, if you enjoy the reviews for professional um, applications using different hardware, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for even more videos coming in the future. Hope y'all are staying safe. Have a great day.